Raimi. Back <laughs> for another go yeah. at Doctor Strange 3. This is a movie, Brian, that we've heard rumors about for some time now, Brian. Now they're saying that they have a director and Raimi is back to doing it. What are your thoughts on, on his return to this? I don't know what to call multiverse of madness. I don't know if he looks, I don't know what the genre looks at it as a success. I think it's still, it made money just based off the, the, you know, uh, successes of other films, right? Especially no way home and the other f big films, you know, anything, anything you put out, I think makes money for you at that time. Yes. So what are you, what are your thoughts of him coming back to this? And what are you, exp are, do you have any um, details as to what this will be about? So Multiverse of Madness will hold an interesting place in the history of this, because on the one hand, it made $955 million. So it was profitable. So, yeah. And Sam Raimi stepped into a difficult situation because Scott Derrickson and the studio disagreed to the point where part of a movie was made. Yeah. And Raimi had to come in. We just talked about with Blade, right? Raimi kind of did a little bit of that. He kind of came in, picked up the pieces, crafted half of a movie, yeah, and managed to at least get it up on screen to a level that people went and saw it. But you could argue that it's also the movie where Marvel slippage was really starting to become apparent. Because it's it's a movie that when you look when you watch it now when it comes on TV you're like how did this movie get close to a billion dollars like it, it really it's kind of what you ask I think when you watch it there's a lot more flaws than there is brilliance I'm open to it I mean Raimi is he is kind of a horror guy he is kind of a you know that sort of I'm open to him having a clean sheet to give this a try I do think you're getting. I, as we talked about, you're getting Sam Raimi with a few miles per hour off his fastball at this point in his career, mm -hmm. but that may not be a terrible thing. My other thought, and I don't know what your reaction to this is, you notice how Marvel's stable of directors is shrinking to like the people they've on they only the people they've worked with before. Is anyone else noticing that like you're not really seeing the new blood as much, right? It's like we brought the Russos back. We're bringing Raimi back. Like, Cretton, we thought was leaving, but actually he was getting promoted to do Spider-Man. Like, it's a pretty small stable of familiar names. Those days <laughs> of we get the new... The, those days of we found the Russos on TV and gave them Captain America, like, yeah. that's not happening anymore with these projects. So there's a part of me that feels like whether it's the studio, whether it's just the genre fading in the eyes of agents and talent, they're kind of left with retreads. Like they're working with the same people they're used to because it's kind of all they have. Yeah. And I'm willing to, willing to take on the job and, and, and especially New Blood now trying to ruin their careers after they just get started. You know what I'm saying? A few million dollars don't go too long this, these days. You know what I'm saying? So, and again, again, this sort of work you don't do for the for the money, although it's nice. You do it for sustainability and all that, but to do it because of the craft, you know. But uh, Raimi coming back. I think the, the bigger question is you ask what what's the movie about. So here's my number one question for you: Is Charlize co-headlining this movie or not? I don't think so. Okay. If you if you're trying to save money, then the answer would be no. She's not cheap, and she wouldn't expect to sell. And I don't think she wants to be a part of the Marvel universe just to be a part of Marvel universe. She wants to get pizzied. Well, it felt like she did when she signed on to do the cameo, which was like a long time ago. But like. I don't know that they necessarily have to pull on that string and keep going with that, whatever that recast. was. There's going to be a recast. They should, especially if she's going to be demand, demanding, yes, I think, demanding a certain amount of money. And we can't have that. She, Her character is not that important. She's a roadie. I'm sorry. <laughs> Time to bring call somebody else. 
so then I would say, what is the movie about? Like the purpose of Doc Strange 2 in theory was, it was a mess of a movie, but you can kind of see like, okay, it's multiverse on big screen, first and foremost, right? Introduce people to that. It was Scarlet Witch Breaks Bad. And then that sort of, in theory, we would have thought leads you to other directions down the road. Again, it wasn't so much about Stephen Strange himself necessarily. So we're left with the third eye, right? We're kind of left with that at the end. Like, presumably that will be something we, we go forward with. But like, yeah. I did. I guess the question is, did we need a third strange headlined movie, like, you know, to I round think... him out? If this movie comes out before the Secret of Secret Wars, then I guess I—I I mean, because the the second one left off as you know they're going off to prevent incursions, right? Right. So I would assume that this movie makes more sense before the Secret before Secret Wars. Uh, yes, uh, I think so... it would happen. I think Secret Wars is going to get delayed again. So I feel like for sure this movie would shoot and come out before that. Yeah. So let's see. I mean, like you said, you know, giving Raimi that second, that, that clean slate to do what he, to cook. Yeah. Uh, makes sense uh, because he came in halfway to sort of save this film. Yeah. And I think the budget will be half of what the second one was. And the second one was what? I mean, the rumors were the budget for that went over $300 million. So how much, Brian? How much has Marvel lost on some of these recent bombs? Yeah, speaking of, good segue there. So we, we got some figures that made the light of day regarding the Marvels and Quantumania in particular. Did you, have you seen the number, by the way? Did you, I sent it to you. Did you see what the, the final, I think I saw it, the but... final Marvel's budget, the actual budget, when you take the film plus marketing plus kind of the extra stuff, $455 million. So, again, if that's your cost, just to put that in perspective, you must make a billion dollars to break yeah. even. Yeah. Like, that's a lost cost. That, that's, a, yeah. that's a mistake. You should never make a movie where a billion dollars is your break even. That's never a good idea. Here's the problem, Brian. When you run up, when you run the tape, and you hear Kevin Feige talking about the Marvels is going to be dope. So four fifty five, they did get some tax credits back, but the reported loss to the studio on that movie alone was two hundred and thirty seven million dollars on a franchise where the first entry made one point one billion. Although, as we said, we've always said that was kind of a product of the times and the momentum to Endgame, but still. You do not greenlight the second Captain Marvel film thinking you're going to lose $237 million. Yeah. Um, statistically, by the way, that number would be Disney's single greatest flop ever. <laughs> ever. Move over John Carter. <laughs> which is the current, <laughs> current record holder. But then they had a thing there about Quantumania. So Quantumania, the loss was a little bit smaller. It was closer to like $80 million. Okay. That budget wasn't quite as high. And that had a $100 million opening weekend domestic, if you recall. What was the budget for that? I think that one was closer to like 200 or a little bit lower. Throwing marketing was closer to like three. Um, and then they, because of that opening weekend, they were able to scratch out, you know, something close to four ish like total yeah. so, you know they kept a little more they kept half of that and you lose 100 million a little less than 100 million but those so like those two movies alone they lost more than 300 million dollars on so if you just say like hey those movies come in the same year right so you have guardians three sandwiched between those where they did fine but they're two new entrants in a calendar year they lost an average 150 million dollars a movie And that doesn't like this analysis doesn't even include Indiana Jones, where the budget was over three hundred million dollars and they lost two hundred million dollars on that. So when we talk about resources being scarce, they get scarce in a hurry when you start losing one hundred fifty to two hundred million dollars a project in Star Wars, Indiana Jones, and Marvel. 
So this is why I say like, whether it's Marvel, you know, we know Warner Brothers has cash problems. So don't underestimate that Disney's purse strings are getting tighter and that these yeah. budgets have to go down. And the only films that are going to get the real money, the real money are going to be Spider-Man 4 and the Avengers movies. That's it. I think everything yeah. else, they're, they're going to start, you know, we heard Blade was going to be less than 100 for going forward. Like, it's going to be like 100 to 150, I think. What can you do with that for me as a filmmaker? We'll have to see how Daredevil Born Again does as well. The, so the rumor was that budget was cut dramatically too, by the way, because there was a quote from really? the television side about Agatha, which they confirmed was a lot cheaper than anything else they had made because there's not a lot of effects mm -hmm. in it. And then there was a comment made that they applied the same like budgetary approach to Born Again. 